Salü. Ähm, ich hoffe und glaube, es läuft. Sehr gut. Ähm, ich werde heute über Tech for Sex Work reden. Um, still the wrong language. Um, I'm going to talk in English. Um, sorry. So I'm going to talk about tech for sex work. Um, it's a little bit like we all know the internet was made for porn. I guess. But if the internet was made for porn, why is it so hostile towards sex workers? And Usually in the beginning of a talk, there's like an introduction, um, often like an introduction from like someone else, or at least like the person who is giving like a little bit of um, explanation who they are. And that is a little bit complicated in that case, because it needs like a little bit of um, explanation to the introduction. So if you happen to know me for whatever reason, um, please look very carefully into this blitz dingsy, because forget whatever you know about me. We're first going to talk about the sex work persona. What is a sex work persona? Um, well, I found a lot of good gifts. That's pretty small. It should be a bit bigger. Um, but I hope you do understand or uh, see Sailor Moon transforming into Sailor Moon. I have no clue what Sailor Moon's, I don't know, legal name is. But yeah. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about persona before. Um, what is a persona? A persona is kind of like a person you become for like some some time or like for, for some some thought um, and it is mainly some kind of privacy thing just like oh yeah sometimes you like a different person um, so it's like kind of like your privacy protection um, but it's also like a way to create your own boundaries what to do like in what persona um, and Persona is a very, um, it kind of comes out of acting as actors usually take on personas and like roles for some um, time. And I'm pretty happy to give this talk at the sea base because I learned a lot of acting in the sea base. So the persona is also some kind of method acting um, or connected to method acting because it is kind of like find the persona in yourself that you're going to portray. And that is why sex workers usually work under a different name, so they kind of mask themselves. Um, that leads to, like, easily to the question about, like, well, if, like, um, a sex worker is like someone else, like, isn't there, like, some kind of authenticity issue? And shouldn't you always be, like, your authentic self and, like, always the same person and, like, very connected to who you are, to your inner self? Um, And that idea is, in some in some connections, useful, but in the context of yeah of sex work, but also in general, I'd say authenticity works as like some idea, but altogether it is kind of bullshit. Um, why is that? Um, we all do have clashing personas. We all are different people at different times. Um, in the context of sex work, um, and a lot of people, I guess, will look because or watch the talk because, well, sex and sex sells. Um, you're like a very different person if you're having sex with someone or if you're having like lunch with your grandma. And if you don't agree with it, then I'd say something is strange with you. Um, or maybe you are, I don't know, the grandpa to your grandma. Um, but otherwise, you're just like a different persona. And so the authenticity um, thing does get like a hit there because we are different people like in different, um, yeah, different connections. So we do have like clashing personas. What does it mean to have like clashing personas? Um, for sex workers, usually it means like, well, you have at least like two names. And if you have like two names, you usually also do have two phones, which is like the next slide. Um, and it creates like a lot of question about like, well, when are you like, what persona? How do you deal with that in the context of the internet? How do you deal with like online dating that isn't work? Um, like what persona do you use for that? And how do you deal with stuff like image reverse search? So if you have like your own images somewhere, how do you deal with them? Like how are you not found in the other persona? And that's kind of like just clashing, clashing part. Um, And what if is uh, what is if your day job or like if you have a second job or like a different background that is kind of public too, which is yeah just clashing personas. Um, and to demonstrate that or what I mean with clashing personas, I have like a short clip that I try to wait go through. Um, yeah, just a 20 second clip. Watch it. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know, Dad. 
You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I wanna hear it. You wanna hear it? I love you, Dad. You're dropping me off at school. I love you, Dad. Look at this place. Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's a copy. So in this clip, there are like a lot of things that are worth mentioning, like the abuse of police force by his dad because he's just using like the police car um, to embarrass his son in front of the whole school. Um, but that's not really the point. What I want to talk about, like the embarrassing part, because on the one hand, um, Miles, the kid, um, wants to be like a good kid to his dad. So he does want to say like, oh yeah, I love you. But he's also like really embarrassed because he's in front of the school. And in school, he's just a different persona. So that is what I mean if I'm talking about clashing personas. Um, you are just different people, or like we are different people in like different settings, and sometimes these settings clash. Um, in my talk here today, two of my personas clash. So, um, who am I? Well, on the one hand, I have no clue. I do not know who I am. It depends a lot on the context. But still, try to give like some kind of context. Well, on the one hand, I'm a former politician and activist. Um, I was like a board member for the Pirate Party back when the Pirate Party was still a thing. Um, I did a lot of, like, of privacy activism um, years ago. And to some degree, I'm still an activist because I'm giving this talk and talk now about sex workers' rights. Um, and on the other hand, well, I'm a sex worker. But how do like sex work and politics go together? Because that's like, well, no, that doesn't really work. Um, so while I'm like, kind of like outing myself here in like these two personas, I do want to make sure you, that you do understand this, that these are different personas and we aren't always the same, the same person. Um, so on the one hand, well, I'm Gero Nagel, that's like my legal name. That is my politician or former politician, also like mainly my activist um, name, um, also Zweifel. And well, then I'm Dennis Deep, um, the sex worker who does sex work. And in this context that I'm like giving this talk, it's like, well, I know the CBIS basically as Gero and like a lot of net, net um, activism and stuff. Um, but I'm also talking about sex work and that's like, well, the other identity. So what identity is like real here and what is like properly? Um, and it isn't really easy to say. And on that saying, why am I outing myself here? Like, why do I do that? On the one hand, um, I'm quite aware of like my privileges in this context. So like, well, I'm a man, so I do have a lot of privilege over like women, and most sex workers are women. Um, but also, I don't really have much of a family. I don't really have children. I don't have anyone else to pull down there. Like, I don't have like I don't um, or, like to a lot of sex workers. It is very hard to out themselves, as it will create a lot of stigma not only to them but also to their family. And there, I'm like on a rather lucky side that I don't really have one. Um, and on a short side note, there will be people, at least I've had like plenty of them, to tell me that, well, I, like if you have like two personas, that's like kind of, I don't know, bad for you and like some kind of hobby psychologist telling you like, yeah, don't do that, that's evil or something. Um, and sorry, but I do know what's good for me and not you, so don't. Um, so let's start into the actual talk. We start with what is sex, and I'm like a little bit disappointed that we don't really have like a proper audience, and well, we can't have that. Um, but I'd love to have the audience stand up, just like, okay, what is sex, and answer like, well, is kissing sex? If so, sit down and kind of like push pressure on people because we don't really want to talk about it. And part of why sex work is so stigmatized is because we don't talk about sex work, but we generally don't talk about sex. Um, and is kissing sex to you? Um, is sexting sex, like sending nudes and stuff, is that sex? Um, is masturbation sex? And I have heard to all of them like different parts. Um, and then, well, penetration, that's kind of like the obvious thing. It's like, oh yeah, everyone agrees that at least penetration is sex, but even there, well, I know people who say that blowjobs aren't sex because I don't know. They don't count. Um, and the answer to that is, well, sex is whatever makes you feel sex, like whatever gives you the feeling of having sex, of being sexually engaged with someone consensually. If it isn't consensually, it is not sex. Um, so this 
two points basically um, everyone involved has consented into it and the other one is just the feeling that you have sex. Um, then we come to what is sex work. And sex work is basically whatever you do for that sex feeling, for that sexual pleasure that you can give for money. Um, but it is also to a huge degree care work. Um, and care work, well, that's basically what a lot of teachers do. Um, what, uh, yeah, all kind of childcare is to take care of people. That's usually an unpaid work. Um, and usually something that women do. And when that gets paid as a sex work, um, that often creates a lot of issues, which is, yeah, pretty awful. Um, and also, um, sex work is to a huge degree fiction. We create to a lot of um, degree um, environment for people um, to live their sexual pleasures, whatever that might be. And the fiction part will create like issues again. So like, yeah, if sex work is fiction, isn't that like kind of evil? And aren't we like playing our clients and stuff? Um, and no, everyone knows that what fiction is and like how sex work is fiction. No one believes that our often quite fake name, uh, fake sounding names are real. And every child knows that Bob the Builder is fiction. So I'm pretty sure our clients can can see the line that's like, well, we do create like a fictional world for them for some time and after that, that's done as well. So let's go to prostitution. What is prostitution? Isn't it kind of like the same as sex work? And yeah, it kind of is. Um, but it is often called that it's like the oldest profession in the world. It is something that we as sex worker often say kind of to justify ourselves. Um, but actually that's not true. Um, prostitution and the way we use the word was created like 100 years ago or like 120 years ago. Um, it is basically police regulation of sex. Um, in that case, um, sex of women because, well, gay sex or lesbian sex was no sex at all back at the time. Um, and gay sex was forbidden anyway. So prostitution is basically to, or like the prostitution as we use the word today um, was mainly created um, around 1900 when stronger laws came into place and um, yeah and a lot of people are like um, a lot of women were checked by the police um, if they're like sex workers and they had to undergo a lot of very humiliating um, processes by being checked by police doctors and stuff um, and that is the early yeah the early development of like the uh, prohibition movement that we have these days. So back in around 1900s, like the first wave or like the first feminist groups um, were fighting against sex workers and prostitution because they felt attacked that they might also undergo the police um, mistreatment that a lot of women had to deal with, also prostitutes or sex workers. And... That is why, yeah, why so many feminists or like why there's like a tradition of like feminism kind of fighting against sex work. Some feminism, not all. Um, and yeah, so which is kind of interesting that this kind of anti-behavior um, focus on the prostitution or like on the woman doing it and like not on the evil police regulation and like on the evil police laws. Um, what did it look like, um, yeah, once up in a time? Like, what was, or like what is traditionally seen as sex work? And well, there's like brothels. That's kind of like what everyone kind of believes. And well, there's like street sex work. We all have seen, like, or most people have seen, at least in some movies, some, some sex workers at the street. Um, and they're like agencies. And that's kind of like the traditional way. Um, so that you do have like some people setting, yeah, setting dates up. Um, that is a little bit glitchy towards towards um, pimping um, which is like well that's like always evil but it is it's a little bit like more complicated as well a lot of sex workers do need agencies um, to set up clients and like to find clients and we as yeah workers we do need clients um, and what is sex work today well we still have like brothers and street work um, nothing changed there. Well, we do have like a lot of strip clubs, not that much currently, but generally. Um, we do have like a lot of escort websites. So, so um, 
a lot of sex work, at least connecting, is happening online these days. We do have like phone sex, um, we do have sexting that can be, yeah, can be paid. Um, we have a lot of camming, so, um, and well, we do have porn. Um, the difference between camming and porn is basically that like camming is like an usually one-on-one -on -one interaction and that's like happening live and porn is more like the properly performed sexual act that is made or like that is like produced way, way more, um, yeah, way more uh, professionally. Um, what is a little bit um, interesting or like in, on that level is like why isn't like erotic literature seen as sex work? And generally that's kind of like, well, if like phone sex is sex work, why isn't like, I don't know, writing novels or stuff um, sex work? And the point is, or like the reason is mainly like a historically one, because like, well, you had like a lot of sex workers and with technology evolving, they weren't there and um, literature was always around and porn literature was like always around. So that's a little bit like, it is a little bit blurry, but that's where we do see, see um, a change. And why did it change? Like, why did sex work become a tech thing? Why do I talk about tech in context of like sex work? Um, sex isn't really something that happened with a lot of tech, but rather, I don't know, human to human, there's like not that much technology um, involved. But on the one hand, well, everything kind of moves online. So d yeah, sure, sex work does too. But on the other hand, we also have like new legal challenges that kind of push sex work um, into different spaces. Um, so for the first, we're gonna talk about decriminalization. That is kind of what most sex workers want, um, that we do not have like any criminal law um, about us. So, like, well, we are just like professionals um, offering a service, so why can't we just have that? Um, and in most countries, that's not the case. It is the case in a couple of states in Australia and in New Zealand, and nearly in Japan. Um, and on that level, we do see that decriminalization alone isn't helping. Um, as in Japan, only uh, vaginal sex is seen as um, prostitution, and every sexual practice that isn't, um, yeah, happening vaginal, um, it isn't, yeah, it isn't seen as sex work, and therefore there are like no criminal rules um, applied. And yet, Japan is an incredible stigmatized country um, on sex work. And why we do want decriminalization and we don't want any more criminalization is because we want more rights. We want rights for ourselves. We want to kind of unionize and fight for our rights and no more wrong laws can help us. It's like our point. Then let's talk about legalization. And that's often kind of seen as the same, but it isn't. Um, so when, I don't know, a lot of drug people, uh, drug people sounds awful, um, but like when we or like when people are arguing for legalizing drugs, that's like often legalization to say like, well, they want like a specific rule where we can or where people can can consume drugs legally, but like in a safe environment. On sex work, we do not want to have this kind of regulated um, environment as legalization as we do have it in a couple of countries. Um, for example, Germany, we do have usually a registration. So what we have is we have this kind of, I'm not sure if we can actually see that. Maybe we should have talked about that. Um, so we do get like some kind of paper that we have to register um, at a uh, governmental office. Um, and so there's like a database where all our data is in to check whether we are like legal to work. And if you don't have that, um, that paper and if you do work as a sex worker, and get checked, you do have to pay a fine, um, which is if you're like an escort or something like not that bad, so like, well, you can still do that. If you do work in some kind of studio, or like some kind of brothel, um, the brothel will be shut down if anyone will ever find out that someone worked in it without a re registration. So for a lot of people who do work on a, in brothels or studios, that is like a very important thing to, to have this registration, which we don't want to have because who knows how long that database is safe and we all know that databases aren't that safe, at least not the governmental ones. Um, but legalization also means that we have a lot of other restrictions. For example, like in Germany we talk about Sperrbezug, um, which is kind of like a restricted area in which sex work can't happen. And 
what people often understand is like, oh yeah, like street sex work can't happen, and it's like, yeah, maybe like the area around schools or something, there shouldn't happen any any uh, sex work. Um, but it does mean like every kind of sex work. It does mean that there can't be like any brothel um, in a Sperrbezirk, which is in, in Germany um, state-wise organized. So um, Berlin doesn't have it, but a lot of states do have it. Um, with like very confusing rules and like hard to follow to understand. Okay, where can I work and can I not work? Um, and it does include like all kind of hotels or something. So if I have like a client who's like requesting me to like a hotel and I'm going there, I kind of have to check beforehand if that hotel is in a Sperrbezirk. And like, why the fuck would that ever matter to anyone? But this is also part of like legalization um, process. Um, and it does include um, regulation of sex practices. Um, it does include uh, to say like what kind of sex practices are allowed and what do we have to use. As in Germany, we we are legally bound to always use condoms for all kind of sex. And um, well, as my clients are mostly men, so be like, well, so in all the unpaid sex, it's like totally fine to um, to have sex without condom or something. Um, on the uh, on the on the point that I get paid. Um, I can't do that. I can't even give like a blowjob without a condom, which is kind of like weird. Um, and that is the legalization um, approach that we do have in, in Germany as well. Um, then we do have like the criminalization um, approach. That is like a rather easy one. Everything is criminal and everything is evil. Um, sex work is forbidden. Um, it is basically, yeah, police, pimps, organized crimes, um, as bad as it can get. Um, and to justify that's like how it looks because yeah you just get jailed um, there's like nothing really to do and then we have the Swedish model the Swedish model is a mean one it claims to be there for sex workers it claims to help sex workers out of the scene um, it is the so-called um, sex buy law so sex work itself is legal but it is illegal to buy sex um, which means the sex worker itself doesn't do anything wrong, but every client is doing wrong when they request um, sex. Um, so it's like a cr client criminalization. And whoever takes money from a sex worker becomes a pimp. That includes landlords. So if my landlord knows, or like if I'd be in Sweden, um, and my landlord knows that I'm a sex worker and I'm going to use the money that I earn with sex for paying my rent, my landlord becomes a pimp. And on the one hand, it's kind of funny because, well, who does really like landlords? But on the other hand, it's like, well, that also means that sex workers can't out themselves ever anywhere because otherwise they won't get any, any flat ever because, well, no one wants to become a pimp uh, and want to be prosecuted as a pimp. So that creates like a huge stigma on that level. And the Swedish model altogether, well, it says that um, it wants to protect sex workers from clients and, I don't know, evil environment and stuff. Um, it actually increases violence because you don't have any safe work environment. You don't have any kind of brothels or something because no one can earn money with it. Um, or no one can legally earn money with it. And therefore, a lot of it pushes further into um, a criminal um, environment. As in um, Northern Ireland, where... Um, so the Swedish model was introduced like a couple of years ago. The Queen's University, which is based in uh, Belfast in Northern Ireland, had like a huge study on it um, before the Swedish model was introduced there um, on how big the um, the general sex um, business scene was. And two years later, after it was introduced, it had like the same um, research again, and it found out that. It didn't change. Like the, it was still around the same number of people working in the sex work, but the violence increased by like 26 percent. So the Swedish model does not abolish um, sex work, which it claims to do, um, but it just increases a lot of sex, uh, a lot of violence. So, um, yeah, to show that. That's a bit like how I imagine the Swedish model is. That, well, she is like really good. She has like everything she can, but everyone, are like, well, she is pr uh, uh, practically in a prison. Um, but yeah, everything around her is, uh, oh, she can't connect anyone because you can't. Um, the internet is made for porn. 
But where is it really? Like, where do we find porn? If we want to look it up. Um, and, well, we all know once there was a lot of porn on Tumblr, but that's gone. Are there, like, any porn apps? No, there aren't. Why aren't there any porn apps? Why does it not exist? What is it about social media? There isn't really much porn on social media. Why is that? And the internet kind of moved there, so where is the porn if the internet was once made for it? Um, and, well, it kind of disappeared, mainly because of the terms of services of all kinds of services. Um, and, yeah, in terms of services, it's just a lot of reading. We do do that because we have to figure out, like, where to work. And, well, we do have, like, stuff like female nipple ban on um, Instagram. Like, oh, why are, like, male nipples allowed but female nipples not? And close up, what's the difference between them? Where the fuck is that coming from? Um, we do have, like, a lot of real name policy. Um, and as I kind of explained earlier, what is a real name? Isn't like a lot depending on like who we are in what context? Um, why is Dennis not my real name? It is my real name. It is like how I'm interacting with a lot of people. Why is it like not real because like not legal? What the fuck? Since when does the internet require like authori authorization like that? That's awful. And well, a lot of services just have like a new, new nudity um, uh, uh, restriction. And then kind of like the next idea is like, oh, yeah, if you want to have um, porn, just have it like on your own website. And then we do have the issue of youth protection. And a lot of like people understand that we do want to want to protect youth um, from whatever might be harmful. And if porn is considered harmful to youth, then we do want to protect them from it. However, um, to have it on like your own website, the legal requirements in Germany say that you have to um, have the ID of everyone who is watching whatever might be considered um, harmful to young people. That means that if you want to have porn on your own website, um, you have to have some kind of checking uh, mechanism for everyone who is watching that. So you can't just have it on your website. You do need like a lot of um, technology to figure out no one is accessing it without without you knowing who it is. Um, and on porn, which most people don't really want to talk about, that's that's quite an issue. Um, we do have in Germany um, some stuff like imprint, so we do need to have like our address on the on our own website. There are like ways around them. They're like services um, that provide you with an imprint that does not have your legal um, your legal address on it but of some kind of service, um, which a lot of sex workers use because, well, we usually don't work at our own home and we usually don't want our clients to come to our home because that's, yeah, we are someone different like at home and at work. Um, that is why we do have all that work persona and stuff. Um, and well, there's like domain, domain registration and stuff. So um, at least like in the registry, um, usually there's like your, your address and stuff as well. Um, the DNIC, the German domain re registration, um, doesn't publish it anymore, but or like, you do need to, to prove that you have um, reasonable reason to access it, but yeah, it is still an issue. And then talking about the internet, as a lot of people will come, I'm pretty sure of it, as we talked about um, social media, what is with the Fediverse? Can't we all just use Mastodon and stuff? And... Yes, we kind of could. Um, and there's like an instant um, as Twitter.at, uh, which is yeah, just like a sex work Twitter um, or Mastodon instant. Um, but the issue with the Fediverse is, well, we usually use social media to attract clients and find clients. And seriously, how many of you actually use the Mastodon or like the Fediverse like on a, on a real basis not just for like some tech porn um, and my experience well the Fediverse is rather empty sadly um, and let's talk about algorithms um, that's a thing that a lot of people talk about lately um, why do we talk about it or what is important for for sex work in the context of algorithm um, one of them is spam filters um, because sex work and sex altogether is like so little talked about, it is like a really good way to scam people. And we all have seen a lot of 
scam emails concerning somewhat sex. And what happens over the years, um, or over some time at some machine learning, is that every email that contains words like sex or fuck or whatever um, is not going to get through your spam filter. And that's the reason why the Berufsverband Sexarbeit, like kind of the German uh, Sex Workers Union, does have like a different domain for our emails as well. Berufsverband Sexarbeit.de um, contains the letters S, E, and X after each other. And a lot of spam filters will just like filter it out completely. So we do need like a different domain for our emails. Um, because these are things you can't talk about. That's just not getting through. Um, and we do have stuff like shadow banning. Um, so shadow banning is like not limited to sex workers. Um, a lot of people do get shadow banned on the internet or like on all, all kinds of platforms for using like too many hashtags or something. Um, but it is quite interestingly how many sex workers are shadow banned. And shadow banning is like you can't, um, or like your profile doesn't disappear. You don't really notice that you're shadow banned. At some point, um, or it's like rather accidentally that you may notice um, because you just can't be searched anymore. Like if you if you look for shadow banned accounts and if you search it on it like Instagram or Twitter or something, um, it does not show up. Um, so you can still tweet and stuff, but it in like all kind of of um, yeah of uh, text or something, it just doesn't come up. Um, and on algorithm, I also do have the rather recent question. Um, like my talk in the uh, yeah, in the uh, uh, recommendation is like together with Inside X Hamster, Drogenhandel 3.0, no, like uh, drug dealing, uh, and Nazis in games. And why is that? I mean, I'm basically talking about like workers' rights. Who the fuck decided that the only place to put my talk is Nazis, drugs, and X Hamster, which is a pretty awful porn site? Um, and I do not believe that anyone did it like intentionally. I do believe that's like some kind of algorithm bias. I'm not sure of that. Um, if anyone does have or know where the recommendations came from, please let me know. Um, let's talk about payment. Sex work is basically getting paid for sex. So how do we get paid? And usually it's like, well, cash. Cash is pretty awesome. That's kind of like anonymous and we can use it um, easily. So let's use, use cash. But online? How do you use cash online? Um, and the easy way and the most common way is PayPal. So like, oh yeah, that's kind of like the easiest way to pay some way. And yeah, no, that's like not anonymous, but you can still use it. And PayPal has a very strict no sex work um, terms of service. So it does close all kind of accounts to sex workers very regularly. Um, and it freezes all the assets for like month and month that you have to fight for to get back to your own money that you have. Because PayPal just says like, yeah, no, we don't do that. That's out of our terms of service and we don't care. Um, so that's kind of like, yeah, that would be pretty awesome, but it doesn't really work. At least, yeah, you need like new accounts regularly and it's just paying on the S. And why is that? Why, why can't we just use it? Um, it's like, oh yeah, we do have like IBANs and uh, Zipper and um, so can't we just like transfer money the, I don't know, at least in German kind of traditional way. Um, and yes, we can, um, since we do have the IBAN numbers. Um, you can use a different name um, for the bank account holder and it will still arrive, but it's still a thing to give out your IBAN. Um, and it only works within Germany. Like if you do have like a bank account outside of Germany and transferring money, your name will be um, visible to whoever paid you, um, which is, yeah, quite an issue. Um, what's with credit cards? Can't we use credit cards? Um, and the idea is kind of like, yeah, why not? And the point is very similar to PayPal. They just don't want us. Um, we are kind of like, I don't know, the ugly people on the internet or something. They don't want us. Um, and what will come up very obviously is cryptocurrencies. Why can't we use cryptocurrencies? Well, we can. Um, the question is more like, well, on the one hand, sure, we as sex workers need to figure out how to use them. But also, how do our clients use them? And most of our clients are like rather old and not that tax heavy. So cryptocurrencies aren't really an issue. Maybe one day they will be, um, but so far they aren't really helpful for us. And I'm not aware of any sex worker regularly getting 
paid in cryptocurrencies. Um, and to some degree, it's also a bit questionable if we really want to trust in to cryptocurrencies, but that's a talk for another time. Um, and what happens as payment online usually is we get gift cards. That's our payment. And that's, I don't know. I'm not really sure what to say to that, but I basically get paid online in Amazon gift cards. So I often have like more money on my Amazon account than on my bank account, and I can't withdraw it because it's Amazon and you have to buy stuff on Amazon. And I don't want to buy stuff on Amazon, but that's the only way to get paid. And that's just frustration. Um, however, it gets worse. They're like new legal challenges, or rather new legal challenges. Um, legal challenges. So, uh, I don't know. First, we're going to talk about uh, Sister Foster. Sister Foster is already in place, so it's actually not new. It's um, already two years old. Um, it is an amendment to the Section 230. Um, Section 230 in the US criminal law um, provides immunity for website publishers um, from third party content. That is the main reason, like section 230, not Sister Foster. Um, section 230 is the main reason, or considered the main reason, why the internet took off that big and why the web um, 2.0 is, yeah, or got a big thing because whoever is like hosting a website isn't reliable for the third party content. And Sister Foster changed that. It created an exception for um, everything that assists, facilitate, or support sex trafficking. And no one wants sex trafficking. I'm not aware ever of anyone being like in favor of sex trafficking. However, it is um, the question of sex trafficking is a little bit um, similar to what we had in Germany, like in 2009, when a lot of people, um, or some people, um, were very much in favor of like some kind of um, stop signs on the internet for everything that's evil. Um, and that's basically some uh, uh, censorship infrastructure for back then child pornography or child abuse material because pornography is consensual and child abuse isn't consensual. Um, and so Sister Foster killed Backpage um, and Craigslist in 2018. Um, Craigslist, well, it's still there, but it isn't available to sex workers anymore. And Backpage was a very commonly used um, website where you could run cheap ads. Um, and we also, oh, a lot of people had like a very good community on Backpage um, to kind of just talk to each other and like figure out how to do stuff. Um, and then we have Earn It. Earn It is still in um, debate. It isn't, uh, yeah, it isn't... Uh, signed into law or anything yet. It is also um, oh, go. Um, an amendment to the section 230. Um, and so far, section 230 provides some liability from civil lawsuits related to the content of users. Um, so similar to, to uh, the original um, section 230, like if you as an um, internet platform um, had content by users that was like their content, and they had to be yeah taken care of it. Um, and we had already the exception of Sister Foster that well it can't have anything with, to do with sex trafficking. Um, but now what comes new to that is that lawsuits um, against service providers can be possible if they um, fail to deal with child sexual abuse material, which is commonly known as child porn, though porn is uh, consensual, so it is uh, child sexual abuse material. Um, and what that means is, well, the idea of it is kind of good. It's like, yeah, no one wants to, to see material of like abused children. Um, but what it does, or what it probably will do, is that a lot of sex work content um, and a lot of porn will be removed from the internet, as maybe it could be who, like how sure is it that no one will understand it as child porn, and maybe that will lead to like some lawsuits, so probably easier to delete it. Um, and what comes to earn it as well is um, the lawsuits against service providers will um, be possible if the service provider allows end-to-end -end encryption. That is a point where a lot of civil society 
um, organizations uh, got wind of and like was like, yeah, no, that's like we can't we can't go into crypto wars again. That's like not no way, but there we are, um, and it is happening over, yeah, sex work stuff. Um, then we have um, CZR. Um, it is short for um, Stop Internet Sexual Exploitation Act. And that is a rather new idea by um, two uh, um, senators in the United States. Um, is it true they do want to deal with like uh, uh, sexual, uh, uh, yeah, sexual exploitation um, on film? Um, and it does so by making the age of consent for filming porn um, to be based on states instead of the uh, federal laws. And that doesn't sound that bad in the first, but you know that in the US you still have child marriages. You still have children being married. And if that will get um, enacted, and if that will be signed into law, um, porn of children will actually become legal in the United States. While it tried to work against it, it kind of does the opposite. Um, and also, what is part of it, um, it has a mandatory registration for all porn performers. So a little bit as what we have in Germany already with our, our um, paper as sex workers, um, that is proposed in the United States for all porn performers. Um, so the government does have like a registry of everyone who's ever done porn um, and can check if they're like legal and everything is fine. Um, and Cezia came out of the so-called war on porn. What is the war on porn? Well, we do talk about a lot about stuff um, and places like Pornhub, OnlyFans or Xamsa that um, recently are a lot in like media and like often seen as like evil, um, yeah, evil porn platforms. Um, and don't get me wrong, the pl platforms are quite evil. Um, I'm not aware of like any sex worker like being generally in favor of these platforms. Um, these platforms basically see sex workers as um, click workers, a little bit like I don't know what what Amazon is doing pretty awfully with. Um, yeah, with all kind of, of uh, technical perk um, is happening there too. So like, oh yeah, like they basically want content and we're going to create it for them and they're going to sell it. And what happened, um, I guess most of you have heard about it in the beginning of December is that there was like a huge um, debate after an article by Nicholas Christoph um, in the New York Times claiming that Pornhub was like really evil and didn't deal with any kind of abuse material. Um, and that led to Pornhub um, changing a policy that sex workers were asking for for years that you only could upload content to Pornhub or all of uh, MindGeek's websites um, if you are registered um, and if there's like some kind of ID check because what a lot of porn people really hate on these platforms, not so much on OnlyFans, but particularly like on Pornhub and Xamsa and basically all of MindGeek's porn, uh, porn sites is that you do have like a lot of illegal, um, yeah, li illegal uploads there. Um, it is a little bit like, I don't know, 10 years ago when a lot of people used um, like Movie 2K or something to watch movies and the uh, content industry was heavily arguing against it. And that debate at some point kind of vanished because Netflix came up and, well, uh, uh, torrenting didn't disappear and Pirate Bay is still there, so you still can use it. But most to most people, um, Netflix just got easier and more comf uh, comfortable than using some kind of, I don't know, ad-based shady website. Um, and that didn't happen with porn yet. So... Yeah, it is a little bit the same with the exception that, well, the big movie companies in Hollywood do have money to run big campaigns. The porn companies that have money are these. And the people who create stuff for them are left out to dry. Um, but where's the war on porn actually coming from? Um, it is called the so-called so so Exodus Cry, um, which is like a strong religious... Um, yeah, strong religious Christian fundamentalist 
group that created um, earlier this year, actually no, not this year, I think it's already some time ago, I'm not sure, um, the hashtag trafficking hub to attack Pornhub. And um, Nicholas Christoph, who wrote the huge, um, oh, huge debated um, uh, uh, piece for the New York Times, um, basically took all the arguments from this Christian fundamentalist group. Um, and while they try to say they're like against sex trafficking, what they are is against all kind of sex work. They're generally against porn. And they're also very, um, very much against all kind of LGBT rights. And they will always claim that no, we as an organization, we do not have a stand on LGBT rights. We don't care about them. Um, but pretty much all of their members are very strong anti-LGBTQ. So that's where the war on pork porn comes from. It's Christian fundamentalists um, trying to censor the internet and everything that has to do with sex because sex is evil. Um, so what do we do? Um, more the question like, why am I giving the talk? For the one hand, yeah, I guess a lot of people will find it interesting to have some kind of insight in what tech for sex work means. But it also the point like why I outed myself is we need help. Um, on the one hand, well, we need to fight stigma. We need to to be okay with sex workers being or doing their job. Um, but above that, um, we need society generally to stop patronizing us. We need to decide on our own what is good for us and what is not good for us. And we need rights um, to stop the, the wrongs. We need support from everyone who is in favor of us doing our jobs. And, and I believe a lot of people who are watching this talk are watching porn. Um, maybe they're like not booking sex workers anymore because they did um, have a ditch a bit with porn coming around. Um, but porn is a part of sex work. And if you want to have that option to book sex workers, but also just to watch porn to enjoy that in a hopefully legal way, then you do have to, to support us. And you can do that by giving us money. Um, like not me personally, or like, well, for sure, if you do want to book me, you do have to pay me. Um, but um, in the last year, well, we do had like the COVID uh, situation. Um, and the best, the Berufsverband Sexarbeit, which is kind of the German uh, uh, sex workers union, created an emergency fund for sex workers that are not liable um, to any other emergency funds, which are quite a lot. Um, for example, me, who is legally still a student, and because I'm a student, I can't um, have any kind of, of help from the government because basically I'm a student. I can't even uh, yeah, apply for like a, a fundamental um, support or hard sphere. Um, but that isn't enough. We also need the Sex Workers Union best um, itself to be stronger, to, for, uh, to work for, for better rights. Um, and similar organizations as the Berufsverband, also like on the European level, that's the ICRSE um, or sexworkeurope.org. Um, that is like a collection of a lot of sex worker organizations um, around in, in Europe. Um, and that's like an, a collective, the Hacking Hustling Collective um, in the United States that is working a lot on this topic, on like the intersection of sex work um, and hacking and tech. Um, and one very important part is the NSWP. That's the Network of Sex Work Projects. That's the kind of the global um, organization combining all, yeah, all sex workers. And, and while it is a bit funny to say like, oh yeah, give us your money when I'm said like, well, giving money to sex workers is quite uh, hard. Um, organization wise, it does work. So yes, please, if you do have money to spend, give it to us. Um, yeah, that's done. Thank you very much. Uh, we actually do have some questions from the internet now. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, so please, uh, first one was very easy. Someone wanted to see the card again, if that's possible, a little closer. The card. I don't know if you, there's any personal information on it on the um, front, but maybe well, we can, I can. Which which use, camera use should of the we cameras? use? Um, this camera. Wait, I'm gonna come. Oh, you can. Okay. 
All right. So we do have this one, um, like on the front, and uh, do not fall down. Um, can I? Yeah, I can show all of it, like the inside. Um, my birthday is below that. That's why it's covered. Um, but that's like the the card, which is kind of interesting. It does say like I can have it like on my pseudonym or like my my alias, um, which is kind of interesting as sex work in Germany is also like not liable for or like sex work alone is not a reason enough to have like an artist name, um, though it is like said in here, and and that creates a lot of issues as I don't know we can't like sign any kind of contracts or something in our artist name, um, yeah. More questions. Okay, thanks a lot. Next one uh, is a really uh, regarding the Sperbezirk. Are there technical approaches, for example, an official or non-official app, where a sex worker can at least do a quick check if the area the client requests the worker to be is outside the forbidden area? I'm not aware of it. Um, there are... Uh, um, um, I forgot the name. Um, like some organization or like some kind of... of uh, um, um, regional help um, organization like Hydra in Berlin, um, council council places that do help with that, and that you can contact to so say like, oh yeah, do you have like some kind of map or something? But I'm not aware of like any kind of app to to just quick check or something. Um, and to some or like to a lot of um, these Sperbezirke, um it is also constantly changing as a lot of states say that it's like, oh yeah, like in an uh, environment like 300 meters around like every school and like every kindergarten and stuff. And whenever there's like a new kindergarten or something, the area where you can work does change. Or like if some closes or thing, you do have like more place again. Um, and basically it's like no one really cares about it and we just try to not get caught. Okay, so there's a job for you open street map hackers out there. Yes, please. <laughs> Do please. something about it. That would Just be quite write awesome. an algorithm that puts a circle of 300 meters around every school, and uh, maybe that helps. So that was uh, tech and uh, uh, sex work, definitely. The next one is uh, is the new aim of the Schufa, a big watch in the uh, bank transfer, not a big repression for political groups like Hydra in Germany. They need donation for the works. Okay, I don't know what the new aim of Schufa is. Me neither. Not um, sure about that. I guess what they, oh, what I thought they might um, be referring to is the debate um, that happened in Germany uh, quite a lot about um, NGOs being able to um, to run as a non-profit, which for the Berufsverband, for example, was never the case because it is basically there for their members um, and for sex workers, and therefore was never legal for. Um, as an NGO or like a non-government, uh, no, non, uh, um, non-profit. Um, and therefore, if you do spend money to the best, which I very much um, encourage you to do, um, you do not get any kind of um, tax relief because, yeah, it's there for sex workers and sex workers Can't are not... a donation. <laughs> huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one last, uh, is, it's in, in German, the question. Uh, für wie wichtig hältst du eine möglichst bargeldähnliche, anonym und einfach digitale Bezahlmethode für Sexworker, insbesondere online? Ich würde auch gerne öfters andere Pornplattformen nutzen, möchte aber nicht meine eigene Kreditkarte nutzen. Uh, da halt eine vernünftige digitale Zahlmethode mal für nötig, aber Bitcoin etc. liefert keine Lösung. So in English, ja, uh, yeah, how important would be a, a cash-like digital app to transfer money? I'm not aware of anything concerning tech and sex work that I'd say is more you or like more needed than that. Um, there are like a lot of things that could um, turn bad, rather like on the legal side um, and like uh, turn down like more platforms and stuff. But on the development side, I'd say there's like nothing more important than than creating something that we can online kind of anonymous use money and well, yeah. Bitcoin isn't really doing it. And PayPal doesn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah, sure. And, okay. Um, yeah, so that was uh, the from I that. have a question. Okay, there's one more from the yeah, I, one I'm person I'm not sure I'm audience. online because I took a mic call. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you talked about uh, 
the USA and Sweden. How about Germany? Are you aware about people like uh, Mr. Lauterbach yeah. who want to use the uh, pandemic uh, or health uh, reason to f prohibit uh, sex work forever? Well, there's like a debate or rather was a debate about the Swedish model in Germany. It is a little bit pushed back. So currently we are not that much on a, on a threat anymore. Um, there will be like a um, uh, evolution um, um, or like revision on the German law um, in 20, end of 2021, I believe. I think it was like implemented in 2017, so like five years later, um, it was like meant to kind of like be replaced or like be said. And there will come up some political debate um, where to continue with the rather recent or like 2017 German prostitution law uh, or prostitution protection law. Um, but yeah, um, so far, like currently, it's a little bit. Or like it is not as urgent. It is still an issue, um, and we still need to to be very much aware of what's going on there. Um, but I believe, at least I can compare to a lot of other European countries, Germany is a little bit on a safe side currently. Um, but yeah, Lauterbach was quite an annoying with like his super spreader claim for sex workers, which does not have any kind of proper data um, to support that. But he did. Um, if we do want to have more questions or something, tomorrow from 5 to 6 p.m. Berlin time, um, we're going to do another round of Ask a Sex Worker, where I will be to ask all kind of questions that you might have about sex work generally, or the talk, or whatever you want to ask about. Um, and there's also Odina uh, de Riviere tomorrow um, reading out of her book, which is a pretty good book in German. Um, and she will be at the Ask a Sex Worker round as well. Um, Yeah, so you're very much invited to, um, on the one hand, uh, listen to Undina tomorrow reading her book. Um, she has a really good voice and she's really good on hypnosis and stuff. Um, and also join the Ask a Sex Worker round. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And I guess we do have to close as the next talk will Well, come. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for have you having here. me. Um, we take another five minutes to uh, change the stage and then Matthias Monroe will be on here with the last talk of the day. So, uh, bis gleich. <laughs>